five of you were lying down trying to block a shot at once or something. It was really just about you developing yeah. your niche about being a defensive player, basically. Well, it's, it's something that all through my life, I was told by my coaches, you probably would be better up on forward because of your size. I always love proving people wrong. Trust me, there's a lot of people that have opinions that have no idea what they're talking about. If you truly believe that you are good at something, then do it and, and perfect yourself. And that's one of the things with me. I really did think the game. I love proving people wrong. All right, Mike, thank you for joining me. And uh, I did a little introduction prior, but just I always find it most helpful when the guests sort of introduce themselves a little bit about your background and what you're up to now. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Uh, my name is Mike Weaver, playing the NHL for for 13 years, 15 years pro. Uh, me being a, a five eight defenseman, five nine. Uh, I was I made it back in 2000, and typically you had to be six feet. Uh, they wouldn't even look at you otherwise. So I basically ate pucks for a living. It was something that everybody has to find their their unique niche in, in, in the, in the world. And, uh, it's the same with hockey. You, you have to concentrate on something that you do well and repeat it every single time, uh, with consistent, with consistency. I was reading, yeah, I was reading actually some about you with when you were at Michigan, I think at least what I was reading, uh, Michigan State. You can't say Michigan. Yeah. Those are the Wolverines. Okay, they're, they're, okay, down okay, the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're down the street. They used to come party at my school. Yes. Did they? Okay. That's yeah. like telling somebody they're the Habs or the Leafs almost. Yeah, um, exactly. Oh, yeah. But so that you, there, I read one thing in particular was like five of you were lying down trying to block a shot at once or something. It was really just about you developing yeah. your niche about being a defensive player, basically. Is that sort of what you mean by this uh, finding your your skill yeah, set, so to speak? Yeah. Well, it's it's something that all through my life I was told by my coaches, you probably would be better up and forward because of your size. And I always I always love proving people wrong. Trust me, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that have opinions that have no idea what they're talking about. If you truly believe that you are good at something then do it and and perfect yourself and that's one of the things with me i i really i really did think the game and i love proving people um people wrong uh, like as far as like for me so like my whole entire career i was always a defensive defenseman i would always go in um i was really good at reading reading the ice uh, a lot of people would when they watch a game, they would watch the puck. I never watched the puck because the way that I thought, and it took me a while to really understand how my mind worked. Um, I, I ended up coming up with a hockey school defense first. And it wasn't till then because I had to translate what I was thinking into teaching youth players. So it got me a chance to really look at myself and look at what, what I was doing on the ice. Uh, it's like uh, Wayne Gretzky. He wasn't, uh, he's one of the most amazing players of all time, but um, he couldn't coach because it, he just couldn't go and figure out what he was doing that was so magical on the ice. So I think with me, I was very, very good at thinking and coming up with solutions. And, and that's, it kind of translated into real life. And, and the way, the way that, the way that I would look at, I would, wouldn't look at the puck. I would look at the other four guys on the other team without the puck, because if I was able to go and figure out their options, I was able to basically tell the future. And it took me a while to really kind of think of this. It was, it was really mm -hmm. cool. Um, one day I was sitting down and I'm like, I know what everybody else is doing. And, and uh, yeah, it, it just, it, sometimes you just got to go and reflect at your life and, and look at, at what you do well and what you got to improve on. And I, I was a big, I was a solution-based player. So I would, 
I would always be watching videos. I remember one of, um, I was in Florida. Um, uh, we got in from a flight um, and we got to the hotel and one of the guys, I'm not going to mention his name, pulled me in his room and he's just like, Mike, get here. And I'm like, what? And he's like, well, you're making us look bad. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's just like, you're making us look bad by you going and, and watching video review. You're watching, you're asking the coaches for videotapes. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, I want to improve myself and I'm going to do that. And I did the, re the rest of the year. I ended up, uh, it's funny, a couple of those guys got traded off and I ended up being becoming assistant uh, assistant captain on the team near the end of the year. And it was, I was never a brown noser. I would always just be, well, everybody was playing, uh, losing money at the poker table. I was reviewing game tape and I was, I was developing websites because that's, that was my major at school. So it's something that I was always in preparation for the next step, just like on the ice, I was in preparing for the next step um, where that pass was going to go. In life, I was always prepared. I was always worried about not being prepared in life and not having a job in that tra transition because that's one of the toughest things as a pro athlete. One day, I'm calling the NHL um, NHL PA, Players Association, so, the, so all the NHL players have this one phone number. And then literally, once I announce retirement, I'm calling the NHL um, uh, Alumni Association. And it was, it was kind of weird because like the next day I received an email that had uh, all the info for the alumni. And I'm like, oh, it's crazy. Like, it's just like, and that's why a lot of guys go through a very, very, very tough time. Uh, it's, it's emotional drain being a pro pro athlete. Yeah. Those are some great, some of the things we definitely would love to get into more as we sort of move along. Um, I'm curious. Well, one, I was the part of me that that desired better coaching throughout my life because <laughs> I don't, I only ever played single A in high school hockey. So that idea, though, of watching the other players is so interesting because like, I don't think I ever even heard anyone say that before. And and I was reflecting on myself. I'm I'm totally watching the puck. I mean, I played defense a lot too. So I was aware of watching the game more so than the puck. And, but that's such a thoughtful way to like, cause that's a life skill in some sense too, is, is sort of seeing the bigger picture, mm -hmm. looking for cues and not getting too focused on one type of whatever it is, whatever's happening in front of you. <clears throat> Did you like, as a kid, is that something your parents taught you or just, is that just you're kind of innately open-minded in that way or or how did you kind of develop that skill was it a coach when you were younger or how did that come about i i kind of just got it it was kind of a little thing that i was i just got even hitting like i would i felt bad but i would separate guys shoulders like in 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 practice and games and uh they knew that they wouldn't come into the corner with me like i i every almost I'm going to say probably every two weeks, I get somebody with my coaching plat plat platform, coach them. I get people going and saying, oh, they'd be like chatting with, with us. They're like they know that I'm a part of the company and they're like, oh, Mike Weaver just absolutely nailed me at some point in my career. And <laughs> I, I still remember this to the day that I didn't have any air in my, my lungs. So it, it's something that I, I think I just got it. And it's, it's, it was, I would always work on going and improving it, but I just kind of just got it. I just got that, well, that guy is with the puck. Instead of me going and watching the puck, I would, I would always be preparing to go and get body position on that player because there's a lot of guys that just watch the puck. And that's, yeah. I think that's what, what uh, allowed me to evolve my game because I was almost one or two steps ahead of, ahead of the guys. And, and it's, it's funny. You were mentioning Michigan state with five guys laying down on the ice. It's true. Yeah, There's yeah. so many pictures of that, of all of us laying down on the ice. And it, it got to the point where 
Like I was always with every single I, thing I did, it was with a purpose. It wasn't me just chasing after the puck and being like a lab, Labrador retriever and go, oh, here, oh, the puck was, up. oh, right? I would always be like, I'm putting my stick here and that puck staying over there. And by my body placement, I would force that person into that area instead of me chasing this tennis ball around. So it's almost, I, what, and, and if you, if you go kind of really deep into the whole hockey thing, what's an opposition player trying to do? It's the secret to the game. Do you know? Well, I don't know. Score a goal. Is that the, is that the, well, <laughs> well the, that's it, my it, answer. It, it's right. It's right in the name though. It, it, the name of the opposition player. What are they trying to do? They're, they're trying to go opposite of you. Okay. That's what okay. they're trying to do, right? They're trying right, to go. Right, right. If you are going this way, they're trying to go that way. So if you're able to go and think right, that, right, right. it yeah. changes their whole, their whole way of, of doing things. Like, like it's almost like that magician that he's doing his magic up here, yeah, but yeah. it's not, he's actually, the magic's happening here, but it's all about this, right? He has a plan. He has a plan that he's going to unravel, but he's just going to get your, your eyes to look up here while he's doing stuff down here. And it's, and it's kind of like the way that I look at things is my plan is to get that guy, not like, obviously I want to stop him right away. If I'm able to great, but my bigger plan is I want to get him into an area like this, but I want to squeeze him down to an area like this that I'm able to go and capitalize on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's tough mm -hmm. to go and get a guy that has this much room to, to skate. But if your your bigger goal is to stop them, right, then that's that's what you got to do. So like every single time that you go into, into a situation, you got to think of what's your ultimate goal? Well, stop the guy, but where do you want that guy to go? And what is the dangerous areas on the ice? And, and it's, it's kind of funny. Like, like I, I love the, the, I have like a, a half hour, uh, well, 45 minutes with my, my kids at my hockey school in the summer, I, I teach uh, basically almost 300 kids in July alone. And uh, people coming from all over the world, uh, Sweden, Denmark, we had the, a, a player come for three of my weeks from Russia. And it, it's, it's, it's amazing. But the, one of the things I tell them, I'm like, you got to think like, it's a, it's a silly game we play. Like, what is it? It's this little rubber thing we call a puck. And we have five guys on my team that are from different backgrounds, from different possibly languages. But you have your, your, this guy on the bench, which is your coach, but you could consider your boss. And he has a system that he's relayed to these five guys that have to work together for the common goal of getting it past this, this guy that has pillows we call pads into this mesh behind. Like think of how silly the game is. It's like so crazy, but, but it teaches you so many amazing things, how to work together with each other, how to go in blood, sweat, and tears, create relationships. And, and I've had the best relationships of my life just in sports. And, and it's, and it's, it's, amazing that we're able to whatever's happening in life you're able to go to that rink and you're able to put on that that those those that equipment and you're able to escape reality and get into uh a, just a, a just a nice adrenaline uh fun experience and and a lot of the parents in this world go and ruin a lot for these kids because that is their that that is their that, that, that is their thing. They're able to go and express themselves. They're able to evolve. They're able to go and, and let them make mistakes. Let them, let them do, do all this stuff and, and, and try different things because the parents are not going to be with them later on in life when they have to make, and they're going to be making these mistakes. And um, it's, it's great. I've made I'm the, but it's funny in, in the NHL, like everybody looks at us and they're like, Oh my God, you must have made no mistakes growing up. I'm like, oh, I made a lot of mistakes. But the thing is, if you make mistakes repeatedly 
and you don't learn from it, well, that's an issue. But if you make mistakes and you learn from it, well, that's life. There you go. And so do, were your parents, how were your parents with you when you were like a young guy or even as a teen, like going through the hockey process? Well, they're, they're very obviously be t- behind every athlete. There's a crazy parent that drives everybody <laughs> around. Um, but it's something that, yeah, it's, they were very supportive. Um, they knew that I was pretty special. Um, I, yeah, they're very, they're very, it's funny. I ended up, I ended up playing one one year and then, um, I was with Chinkuzi, which doesn't exist. A lot of the teams I I played for don't exist anymore. Uh, so Brampton Maroons doesn't exist. I was there for one year. Uh, Chinkuzi doesn't exist, exist. Then we ended up it's funny, the, fo- the following year after that, uh, this uh, Lindsey Hofford from Richmond Hill Vaughn Kings that doesn't exist anymore. They split. How old were you? How old were you at this time? Uh, that would have been, I would have been uh, 13. Okay. 14, okay. 13. Yeah. yeah. So from there, they ended up, they wanted me and it's the GTHL and, and it's, yeah. OMHA crazy. They ended up going to courts and getting the boundaries around my house. That's like mighty ducks. It's so so funny. (laughs) They ended up going and getting to this day. It's, it's still around my house, but yeah, but it was, we ended up winning the all Ontario's and uh, you know, I was um, MVP of the tournament and, and it's, it's so funny. We ended up going there and there, there was this, there was this one guy that was just like, Harold, like the best guy ever. Right. And it's funny. We ended up going there and I wasn't flashy. I didn't score any goals. I literally like, I never really made mistakes. I really focused on getting that puck out. And it's funny that all of a sudden near the end, I was the MVP of the whole entire tournament, but it's, it's, but I never really worried about everybody else that's going on. Right. You just worry about yourself. And that's, that's all you could really control is, is yourself. Right. And what you do. Um, other people are going to make the decisions and it's just, you just got to just focus on, uh, on what you do as a person. Uh, and then I'm going to tell you things happen. If you work your butt off and, and you're, and you're, you're driven and, um, you know, even if just say you don't get, you're applying for a job and you're, you're preparing and just say you don't get that job. Well, you know, just find another way. And that's one of the things my my dad taught uh, taught me when I went to. It, I, I wrote a really good article for the Players Tribune, and it's called "Tales of the Undrafted Puck Eater." So, in that, I ended up going and being at the NHL draft, and it was my second, my last year of eligibility. And we're sitting in the stands and my dad's like, let's, let's go. And I'm like, I kind of wanted to hear the last person call to kind of close that book. So I remember we're almost at the top and I kind of turned around and I waited for the last name and it wasn't me. And I kind of, I was a little bit disappointed, but relieved that I was able to kind of close that door. And I looked at my dad and my dad's just like, find another way. And it's funny. Like it's, 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 it was pretty amazing. Something like that. And like a little, little things in life that really, really stick with you your whole entire life are, um, it was pretty special. And that's, that was my career. I, I found another way throughout my whole entire career. I was never given anything. The guys that are drafted are, are the guys that are, that are going to get the multiple chances. Right. But, but they're the guys that are, that aren't there. It's, it's funny. I think they're, uh, I, I found a stat the other day. And it's basically the first rounder of the 2019. I think it's something was 50% of the players played in uh, a a game in the NHL in the first rounder. And then it went down, obviously lower, lower, lower. And then the last, the last line was uh, undrafted. Right. And it was something up, up to like 20%. And it was, so like the first rounder was 
50% because they're given every little shot. Second round was like something, it was, it might've been like 25%. And then the third round and all those were like really under, but yeah, it, it was pretty crazy. The, the undrafted guys, those are the, the driven, driven ones. I, and I would rather fly underneath the radar and, you know, take control at that right, right opportunity. The underdog. Yeah. So yeah, no kidding. I mean, you, so your, you said your dad sort of had that find another way type of thing. And mm -hmm. I mean, when it comes to psychological problems or any type of mental health distress, or when people get squirrely, usually it's because they're expecting somebody else to solve their problems, or they're mm -hmm. blaming somebody else for their problems, or they're just, they don't have the insight to see that they have a big piece to play in that puzzle. Mm -hmm. Um <sighs> Again, it's because that's not an easy thing for people to realize. Um, and, and so I wonder just even in the dressing room or throughout your, yeah, your playing career, like, is that something you think most of the athletes have, or are there still the ones that are constantly blaming other people for their situation or is it modeled or role modeled very much um, in a dressing room? Um. No, like, like when you're, when you're in pro, like they, they expect you to go and, and play amazing all the time. It, it's a lot of pressure. It's, it's, it's a very difficult life. Um, I can't remember the, I, I just saw this on YouTube recently and it was, um, I would love to find, I can't remember. It was a, it was in college and it was basketball and he, in their final year, it's the senior speech. So everybody gets up, all the seniors are able to get on the mic and, and go and, and, and take it and, and say their, their little, their little spiel. And one of them ended up saying is just, he looked at the coach and he's just like, my first year I was on the bench. I was very pissed off. I was, uh, it was some, I was blaming the coaches and I apologize. I ended up going home. And I ended up going and I was going to quit and I ended up going back and, and my parents said, have you ever looked at yourself <laughs> and gone in and, 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 and so they ended up saying something magical and this player ended up, I guess, ended up doing, playing, playing, he was the top player in his senior class. And he apologized and he's just like, he just looked at himself. And, and a lot of play, people don't do that. They don't, they'll go and blame other people and they won't look at the mirror. And it's something that if, if it comes into a pattern of with every single person you're having the same issue with, with different people, well, you got to go and just look at yourself and and even just, even just ask a friend, like if you ask a close friend that is pretty honest and you tell them, be honest with me, um, a good friend will, will be honest and tell you, um, because I've, I've told people even, even when they didn't want me to tell them, <laughs> but it's something that some people just need to hear it and, and be able to look at yourself and say, you know what, maybe I'm the issue. And and maybe, maybe you don't like in the, in a job situation, maybe you don't have that, that skill. Well, go learn it. It's, it, it's, it's, it, you like, do you think in the NHL, these guys that do these crazy, amazing moves, do you think they, it just happens? No, they probably worked on it a million times in practice. It, do you, like, and, and these people think it's so easy for NHL players to, uh, to, to they, they got a, such a good life. It's very difficult life. It's crazy. Like, like it's funny after retiring, I've had so many people come up and they don't, they look at me, they don't think I played in the NHL, but then once they eventually find out that I did, they're like, Oh, I could have made it there. But I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, did you? And they're like, no, I could have, but I'm like, well, you didn't. And you, that butt doesn't even 
it, it, you can't even use that in this. You can't, it's, it's not fair, right? Did you, or didn't you? It's like, oh, well, I had a girlfriend. I'm like, well, you didn't. And that was your choice. Choices in life go and take you down different paths. And, you know, at the time you probably don't realize this, but yeah, like, so I like to kind of f- summarize that as being there's, there are wanters and there are doers, right? There's a lot of wanters out there. There's a lot of wanters. I want this. I want that, right? I want the latest iPhone yesterday, right? That they, they, I, I, you know, I want a house. I want this, but, but there's only a few doers and it's, it's something that is, um, that is pretty, uh, it's pretty, if, if you look at that and, and you say, are you a wanter or a doer? And it's, it's something that look at your situation and then put it on paper, write it down, go and write it down. I, I, I did, I've done lots of stuff and I, I would write it down and um, like for even the NHL. So I had a two-way contract and I wanted a one-way contract. So two-way contract is if you, in the NHL, you make this much money. In your AHL, you make this much money. And then if you got a three-way, if you're in the ECHL or whatever, a lower one. So it's, it's kind of tiered. So I wanted a one-way contract. So it was them guaranteeing that I'm going to get paid NHL money, whether I got sent down to the minors or not, which I, I wasn't going to. Um, so I ended up um, grabbing my contract. I ended up crossing out the two-way, put one-way. I crossed out exactly what I was making and what I wanted to make. And I put it on my mirror. Every single day I woke up, I brushed my teeth and I looked at that. Like these are little things. These are little steps that you go and, and, and then you got to go and look at, okay, well, how can I get there? Right. It's not you just looking at that. It's you going and, and getting the skills necessary. If you want that job, well, what is going to go and make it during that job interview? Are you prepared for that job interview? Do you know about the company? I'm interviewing for my coaching platform and these people come on and it's crazy. There are noise in the background. There are, um, they don't even know about my company and it's crazy. You should know, you should know who my dog is, right? Like that, like that's, that's, something like these are crazy things that are simple in my mind, but I guess in some other people's mind, they don't get it. So, but, but these are little things that you got to, you got to go in and prepare. And, and so, so for, for instance, for me, um, I was, I really wanted to work on my, um, uh, my stick handling game, even because, Literally, I used to chop up pucks. Um, so I knew that I had a couple things that I had to strive for in, in order to get that one way. It wasn't magically just going to happen. So by going and working on my stick handling and my passes and really reviewing video every single day, I ended up going and transitioning myself into a powerhouse. So I was a very, I was very stubborn like that. I would always go and try and evolve my game. If you go and if you go and if you feel comfortable, that is not a, that's, that's when you get left behind, right? Feeling uncomfortable. If you are able to get to that point that every single day you feel uncomfortable with your job, that is going to push you to the next level. And that's how I did. I, I, I felt really uncomfortable in my situation. So I was always, um, I didn't want somebody to take my job because a boss is going to go and find somebody else to do it better. If, if you are not up to the task, right? It's all about, you got to look at that. There's always somebody better and that's true. There's always somebody better. So how do you go and get better? Right. Than that guy. Well, then the next thing is going to come. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that, that better person in some sense is you as well, right? Your future self who can be better too. Um, I'm so this idea, there's a, as a therapist, if I was to, when I am describing behavioral therapies to people, Mm -hmm. that's the idea of what you mentioned. You can't 
I always say you can't think your way into right action. You have to act your way into right thinking. So it's a little different, but in terms of athletics or achieving anything, yeah, you have to move, you have to do something. And so many people get stuck wishing, wanting, resenting, you know, all that kind of nonsense that keeps them stuck. So I want to, can you explain when you, you were saying you were sitting at, at the draft or whatever, I can't remember. I think you said the draft and the last yeah, person's H-O-Draft. name, yeah. Yeah. the last name gets called, you know, you had that sense of relief as well as kind of motivation. Mm-hmm. Can you just talk through, cause I think a lot of people, and we can say it's, you know, you got to do instead of think, and it's all about action. I think it's really helpful for people to understand how you process that like emotionally or internally. So was there any kind of like, how do you work through the disappointment or the, just the, the self-awareness that you can say, okay, this is not good. I need to improve this and then taking the steps forward. So more kind of, how do you process that personally? Or is it just kind of like simple, like I'm just not going to dwell and well, well, there's a couple of like, like with me, I don't know. I don't know if I thought it differently. I was always very confident um, that it's, it's almost, it's almost like, well, the super Mario brothers, right? Right. You're going there and you're, you're, you're getting the mushrooms and you're, you're, you're jumping on the other guys. Right. But with every, with every level, there's that, there's that difficult guy at the end that was, you know, you get pissed off, right? You would just get pissed off, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't cry, right? You got, you probably got a little upset, mad, but what were you trying to do? You were trying to go and come up with solutions of how to beat him, right? He goes like this way and throws something and you go and duck, right? And, and eventually you beat him, right? Because you're going and you're stubborn. You're there. Like I, it, it took me like maybe days to get to, to beat some of these guys. But, but after that, there's always that next level, right? There's always that next level. And, you know, even at the end of the game, there's always version two that they come out with. So you, you got to go and think of life as, as, as a video game and, and go in and, okay, well, how am I going to beat that guy? Well, I'm going to go and, you know, maybe, maybe uh, pick up some skills, right? Go and go to night school, go in and, and learn research. Like I didn't, we didn't have computers back like this back in before 2000s. Like, like I'm able to search any little thing. I'm able to do courses online. So go and educate yourself on, on, so you can beat that, that level. Right. But when the next level, right. It's, it's all about like, it's all about just come life is a challenge. It's, it's, it's meant there. That's why, that's why there's for, there's only so many employers, right. And there's a lot of employees and Hey, it's fine being an employee, but I wanted to own my own company. So I wanted to control that. So that's why I built coach them. And it was just an idea I have, I had, but I put it into action. And a lot of people have a lot of ideas and they're, they're, they're depressed at their job. They're d- depressed at this. Right. And, it, and it's something that, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a hockey school. I, um, I kind of, I think of, I tell the kids, I'm like, you guys got to think of your life as a, as a painter. So you have this canvas and you have all these, um, um, for, and with every thing that you do, positive or negative, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a brushstroke. So you have all these vibrant yellows and blues and right. That's all positive stuff. So, Hey, I go and help a lady cross, cross the street. Right. I go and put a, 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 a um, brush stroke. I go and um, do, I work my butt off and I, and I do amazing at school during my test. Yeah, it's another stroke. And, but then you have the negative ones, the grays, the blacks, right? And then, okay, I, I go and skip school, right? All negative. Um, I go and um, steal something from my parents, negative. So 
you go and you, every so often you can look back at this campus, right? And you know, when you're 42 years old, like myself, you can look back at it and you're like, do I like my canvas? And for the most part, I really do like my campus. I really do. But if I didn't like my canvas, you can't just take a, a paint can and go, whew. no, it happens by brush strokes. So it's, it's not something that, it's not something that's gonna happen overnight. It's something that is gonna evolve over time. And you gotta put those things in place in order for it to happen. And don't get overwhelmed. I'm telling you, writing down stuff, writing down stuff on a piece of paper is pretty magical. I have right, right next to my bed, I have a journal. Okay. And it's not me just writing, I love today. This was a magical, great sunrise. You just write down anything. You might not yeah. go back to it, right? You might just turn the page and write something else, but you could take what you wrote and evolve it and go and say, okay, here's a couple points. Okay. Let's go and talk about it more. Go and right. And, and that's how things get better. And, 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 um, how did you learn that? I got it. Cause that's another thing that people just don't do. Like, so as a therapist, it's like you should have to somebody who's trying to change or improve their life. You know, journaling is a really helpful thing in particular ways, certainly mm -hmm. for like psychological issues, but people like, yeah. How did you learn? Did somebody tell you that? Or did you just kind of figure that out? Like how I, I, I've always wrote written down stuff. I've always have, I have lots of notes and then every, so every, every couple of days I'll go and put them on to one little area and I'll go and, um, um, actually my, my girlfriend really got me into the journaling thing. The last two years have been pretty amazing that I was, I, I started just journaling. So I have my notes here that I still evolve those, but yeah. it's, it's, it's my private time. Yeah. Sorry, excuse me. My private That's time okay. when I go back to just before I go to bed, I'll go yeah. and write a couple things down and, and I'll relook at all the stuff that I, that I did in the past. It's, it's, it's a magical thing. And people don't, people don't give it, you know, they don't put a, a lot of weight on that. I think, I think yeah, that is, yeah. I think that is pretty special. Like that's how I came up with defense first, my hockey school. That's a pretty cool name, but it was something that I wrote it down. I'm like, <laughs> come up with a name. And then I started talking about, like, it's funny, my, my first, my first time doing my hockey school, I ended up, um, what, one of my coaches, they was in Michigan. Um, it was me and my buddy, we put $2,000 in each. So it was four grand. Okay, we had a big time hockey school here, a, a buddy of mine here, he ended up like, okay, we'll bring, we'll go and I'll market it for you. And we'll go and do it there. So we gave him $4,000 US to him. So it's funny, we had three people that signed up. So he sent us an invoice, $4,000 to the penny. I'm like, come on, like, seriously. So I'm like, I'm like looking, I'm like, okay, there's $2,000 out the window. I'm like, so anyway, so we ended up, I ended up just going and writing down. I'm like, I wanted to do this hockey school. I'm like, what, what is unique? Cause you don't want to be that. You don't want to be, a sheep that follows the herd, right? We don't, you don't want, want to be like that. You want to go and be unique and, and allow yourself to go and, and, and evolve, right? That's what, as, as human beings, we want to evolve. You don't want to be the stagnant person that is just caught in this funk. Mm -hmm. Go and just evolve yourself, be creative. That's what we're meant to do. We were meant to be creative. So I would just go and write it. So I started writing. I'm like, okay. I'm like, what do I do? Great. I'm like, I teach, I teach the thinking. I, I'm very good at thinking the game. So I'm like, I, so it's a thinking camp. So it's a complete unique thing that there's nothing out there like that. It's a thinking camp. We teach it from the defensive side, but it's a thinking camp. So I ended up, it's crazy. The, like, obviously this year is a unique year. Um, but, yeah. uh, but it's, it's pretty amazing what has happened. It's, it's massive. My hockey school, crazy massive. I go four weeks of two rinks going of 88 kids a week. 
And, you know, I'm, I'm not, how about this? I'm, I'm charging based on the quality of my instructors that, that we have. So it's a little bit of higher price point, but it's based on, it's based on what we teach and how we teach it and the low numbers. So we're just not a babysitting camp. So it's, but that happened for me writing it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think also the mindset that you have in your life translates into all these things that you're doing and the messaging or the people on the receiving end of that, whether they're totally aware of it or not, are, are responding to that in some sense, right? Or are drawn to it. Because it's not a, all these things that you have been talking about are not common ways of navigating life. I mean, mm -hmm. I think we know them to be effective and helpful and all those kind of things, but people just, it's not taught to people. It's particularly in schools and et cetera, which mm -hmm. I see a lot of that in a lot of my work, but I want to know how you try to teach that stuff to your kids. So let's take the video game example is like my son's eight. And sometimes with the video games, he starts losing his mind, right? Cause he can't beat the boss or he thinks it should be easy or da, 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 da. So as you were giving that video game analogy, how do you help your kids like through those kind of difficult moments? How about this? It's very, <laughs> I'll be completely honest. It's very, it's very difficult to teach your kids. Yeah. I'm very good about teaching other people's kids. Yeah. Very, very difficult to teach your kids. Don't feel like I, you know, with me personally, I've gone through separation. Um, and I have my two, I have my two amazing kids, but it's, it's tough. Like, you know, I'm, I'm having difficulties with my kids, just like other people do. Yeah, um, yeah, so yeah. it's, it, trust me, like it's, it's not, I'm not because I play <laughs> in the NHL, I'm not God. And I, no. it, I don't know how it's funny. All these people, all these fans would come up to me and they're just like, what's the answer to life? I'm like, I, I have no <laughs> idea. I'm a freaking hockey player. I, like I, I, th I would think it right. I would think yeah, a lot of yeah. amazing things and I was very creative, but I was never, I was never given anything just to let you know, I was never given anything. Like I remember calling, I remember calling um, Andy Murray in St. Louis. I had him in LA and I called him um, because there was a spot available. There was a spot available and I told my agent, I'm like, I'm not signing until I talk to Andy. So he, Andy called me, Andy Murray called me. And this is the time when I, I had, uh, yeah, I had a, my first one way was in LA. And this was the time when, like I didn't have a team and they were kind of interested in me and I called Andy. I'm like, he called me and he's, I'm like, Hey Andy, I'm like, I'm not worried about not making the team. I'm wondering if there's a legitimate spot available because I was never given anything. Everybody thinks, Oh yeah, you play in the NHL must be easy. I'm like, it was a, it was crazy tough. Not like, like near the end of my career, my face, I didn't, my face would balloon up. I'd be ah. like this. It was like this. Crazy. I was reading something about that actually. What and yeah, sorry, go on. But yeah. I was reading about the, yeah, yeah. And, and about then, you and, like and the, 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 yeah. the, the 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 night that I'm um like I would know that it's happening before I went to bed. When I'd be walking, my bottoms, my feet would be like sore. And then I would go to sleep, and this would be fine. This would balloon up. I'm like, this is crazy. So I'm like, I got tested for any, everything. I thought I was allergic to something. No, it was stress. And that's how much, like, like my, my buddy, my other buddy had uh, so much pressure that he put on himself that he has colitis based on this. Like there's like, it, everybody thinks it's all great. You, sh you get on a private plane, you do this. No, I was in fear of my job every single day I went to the rink. There was got yeah. young guys coming up and trying to take my position. Yeah, I worked my butt off every, and I earned every little, little opportunity. And it's something that, yeah, it, it, like, trust me, like just to, so when I was younger, I never cried. I never cried. When I was younger, 
parents would always come to me after the game. They're like, oh my God, you played amazing. I'm like, ah, I could have played better. I never said, I never said I could have played better. I, I never said, I never said that I, I, thank you, never. I would always go and say I could have played better. And I, and I deep down inside, I thought I could. And my whole entire life, I went through that. I never said thank you. And when I was inducted to the Brampton Sports Hall of Fame uh, two years ago, I was, I was sitting there on stage and it was the, the other four inductees on, on the stage. And the, they were playing my video of a little recap of my career. I, that was my first time I cried. And like my, my whole, almost my whole life, like there's obviously, you know, funerals and stuff like that, or my dog passing away and stuff like that. But I never, it was that point that I said to myself, yes, I was good enough. And mm. it, it, it's stuff like that. Like, and, and I feel it with my son too, is that he, an NHL father, that his son's in hockey, it's tough on him. Yeah. So it's tough on him, he, him thinking that, that if he doesn't make the NHL, he's not good enough. And, and it's, and it's very tough and, it, and it's, it's taken a toll on our relationship based on that. A lot, lot of little things like that. So it's, it's been tough. Like everybody just, just to let you know, Instagram fake. It's all, <laughs> it's all fake to so, so Twitter fake. You don't see yeah, behind it's all the scenes. Total nonsense. And when, but, okay. Yeah. I got to stop you. Cause that's beautiful. Like, okay. The first thing is for sure. Parent, you know, I, parenting my wife's a therapist too okay and we meditate and we do all this fucking shit and we're for the most part pretty content human beings when it comes to the kids yeah it's a whole nother story and the reason i i'm curious there's moments where i know i'm the messaging is getting through to the kids um and then there's others where you know we get to be presented with <laughs> our inevitable uh shortcomings as adults and as parents mm -hmm. and so I, I i appreciate that you acknowledge that because i think a lot of parents today expect themselves to be some sort of freaking messiahs or perfect parents and never have their kids suffer or they're really hard on themselves as not doing good enough not being good enough etc um so that parenting piece is definitely difficult. And I, you mentioned the layer of being a former NHL player and your son playing hockey and the stress and the difficulty there that, oh man, I, there's so many ways. I am so curious about just what you think. So one is it's so nice to hear you say at that point, I, acknowledged to myself that I was good enough and you almost allowed yourself to cry because I assume there was other situations in your life where you maybe wanted to cry but you didn't let yourself and that's just an assumption mm -hmm. um and did you say thank you at that uh inductee or induct whatever like did you thank them or or how do you see that like, like um, thank what? Thank you. Well you said you never said thank you so you're oh, getting inducted into the hall of fame yeah. like were you able to say thank you and take in that? Yeah, I, um, yeah, for yeah. sure. I, I did. I did yeah. say thank you to them for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. It, but did you it, feel the thank you? Oh my god, totally. Yeah, oh, for sure. I did. Okay. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it was. I I couldn't stop stop the tears from. <laughs> from yeah, coming good. Out. That it was very. Good it was. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was. It was something that was. Um, that it was pretty special. It was a special night and. And, um, yeah, a lot of years and, and <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of memories, but it's funny. You, you almost for, forget those. And, and, um, uh, it's it, one of the players, um, Ed Jovanovsky used to always say <laughs> he gets his, his, uh, family all the time. He's just like, look around. And a lot of people don't get a chance to look around. Right. They don't, they don't look around of what they have, who they're with, right? Because everybody's so 
go, go, go the whole entire time. And I think what happened with this pandemic and everything, it, it kind of gave a chance for people to look around and understand that they're in, they're in their house and they have to almost talk to each other again. And I'm sure obviously <laughs> there was, there were some divorces that happened. Yeah. And I'm going to say High that record numbers, I think record numbers, yeah. well, record numbers. But the thing is, it, it's probably good that yeah, that happened. Yeah. yeah, yeah and, sure. and and people don't realize that I went through divorce and it was, and it, it's, you, you never want that for your kids, but it's something that it's some people hold on for dear life and it's almost somewhat better to go and just actually not live a lie. Like, yeah. like live, yeah. live, live your life. You're, um, what I'm 42 years old. Uh, my girlfriend always says that you have, uh, you know, maybe 45 more summers. <laughs> if, if you think about that 45 more summers. So every summer you're just like only 45. So like that's, you know, next summer 44. And it's just crazy. Just when you put that in perspective, that's, that's not too many summers left. And it's, totally. it's something like, why, like, why are we wasting this time? And, 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 and why, why is that person going and going to that job every day that they hate? Right? Like go and find something that you love. Like one of the best things at Michigan States, I ended up taking a test. I didn't know what I wanted to go into. I ended up taking a test. So after my sophomore year, you had to come up with your major. So based on that, I took like, there's like a 500 uh, questionnaire. Um, and I ended up taking that and it told me that I wanted to get in computers. Hmm. So it was kind of cool that it kind of directed me based on that test. So from there, I ended up, I ended up going in, in, taking web design, I have a telecommunication degree, got a minor in uh, virtual reality, uh, software development, web design. 20 years ago too. Yeah. Well, yeah, crazy. But, but think about this. So, so during the school, I ended up, there wasn't a virtual reality. There wasn't a web design. There yeah. wasn't, there, they had different classes, but there wasn't minors like that. So I waived a whole bunch of classes. I waved like my file was this thick. I waved all these classes and I, and I added some classes. So I ended up creating my own uh, minor before it was even a minor. Right. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's, it, it was pretty cool, but while players were going on the plane and they were, they were losing money at the poker table. I was designing websites for a couple well-known hockey websites out there. And I developed the whole entire thing. And I made a little money on the side, but I was trying to stay relevant. So when this Coach Dem uh, came came out, I ended up, which Coach Dem is a pretty cool name too, right? A defense <laughs> yeah, yeah, first yeah, and yeah. Coach Dem. I came up with both those names. I couldn't believe CoachDem.com was available. Come on. Amazing. And yeah, Instagram yeah. and Twitter. And it's crazy. <laughs> and, and it's funny. My partners at the time said, oh, that wasn't a good name. I'm like, yeah, it is. That's a good name. And you're going to love it. Um, but, but those are the, those are the things like I ended up, so I'm like, there's a need for co uh, coaches to be able to draw their drill digitally on any platform. So they're, they're drills for practice. So I basically created, created this amazing following. We have the NHL coaches association, a part of this for uh, it's our partner. We have OMHA, which they have 13,000 coaches. We have, um, uh, Minnesota hockey, our partner. We got some huge big bodies that are part of it. I can't mention their names, but guys, I just did this. Me, little me did this. Come on. Ever, <laughs> anybody could go and do it. it, it yeah, it's yeah. all about being a little creative about, about having an idea, having a, something to do and not, and not being afraid to do stuff like what yeah. 45 summers left. Come on. <laughs> um, I want to, how much, how are you doing for time? Um, it is 12. I'm, 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 I'm Got good. A bit of time I, I, I made, I made some time for you. So, okay. Oh, thanks pal. And, and our audience. That. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's very nice. Yeah, of you. We, we didn't talk about the November. So no, November. And I want to, okay, go, 
go Movember. Do you have a do you have a fundraising page? I I did in previous years. I just did it because I to be honest, hey, you look stupid yeah. for uh, for a month. <laughs> but you know what? It's a, it's a great cause for this. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I I do you know what? After this, I'll go redo my my site for for another one. Oh, there you yeah. go. I know I'll make a donation. I, I don't have the courage to I've done it before, but I just can't. I can't. Oh my God. You look stupid, but you know what? Great cause. Great cause. For sure. You know what? Hey, you can go around people in November. Here you go. <laughs> it is a great cause, no doubt. Um, I wanna okay. So the can you talk a bit about the I mean the dark side in some sense. Did you see the uh, the dark side or the the you mentioned before just the, the part about being a professional athlete that nobody really honors for how difficult and and kind of the unseen reality that the the audience or the fans never see or talk about and did you see the TSN thing about the problem of pain with uh Ryan Kessler and a couple other guys? No. Did you see that? It was a few weeks ago. Um, it just gave some insight. It was definitely skewed to the player's perspective. So I don't think it was like a very fair balanced, re, you know, kind of picture of what's actually happening, but it was about the overuse of pain medication and how some players wow. get hooked and that kind of stuff. But yeah, it, it just, it was uh, because that's another side of the game that people don't see is like how players are playing hurt or they're, you know, you mentioned, pretty much your whole career you were you had it in your head that there's other people coming from my job and and i'd say like the challenges of being a parent too must have been intense like traveling around all the time and stuff can you just talk about that well, a bit well for, for instance hey in atlanta i ended up getting a slash look at this so this doesn't go but this one i may but i have wow, no I, I i got slash and it severed my um tendon here so i got no tendon here i'm gonna have big time arthritis but i had an opportunity to get it um uh, operation but it would have been something like something like five months or six months so i would have missed training camp so i ended up saying no to that because i didn't want to miss training camp and luckily i didn't because i ended up having a great year so <laughs> but based on that yeah like like i i played her hurt a lot like as far as like even even when i would block shots like it's <laughs> it's, it's not easy to block 100 mile per hour shots and a lot Terrifying. of times i i ended up getting two slap shots to the mouth i remember i, I got one here and both times it, it, it was the exact same spot too first time it blew the tooth out spit it out they shoved it back in bridged it the second time i ended up um same thing slap shot Went back in the dressing room. Um, the my trainer is like, "Oh, take everything off." I'm like, "No, I'm going back out." He's like, "No, take it off." I'm like, "No, I'm going back out." He's like, "Okay, if you want to go back out, you have to go get an X-ray." So the X-ray is just down the hall. So I ended up. He ended up sewing me up. Um, I ended up going to uh, the X-ray. It was negative. So they put a full cage on me. Went back on the bench. My players on the bench were looked back and they're like you're nuts because my whole bottoms like i had no teeth at the bottom oh yeah but i ended up having an amazing game i think i assisted on one of the goals so that was but but that's the mentality of of hockey like i i don't feel pain ever like it's just you know you just you just fight through it because you want to go and somebody else is going to take your position right, right. or but you're there for your boys too right that's yeah, the, one, so the one bonding thing yeah, it's such an interesting piece that I think is missed in a lot of conversations around self-sacrifice in some sense. So mm -hmm. do you see it as a bit of a, or, or is there space there to, it's such a hard and complex topic, but if players are playing hurt and playing all the time in situations where they they would be best served if they had a break right or if they 
let their bodies heal or they, who knows, whatever it is. How do you, or one, what do you think about that? And two, how does the, I mean, this is across all sports really, but how do we start to maybe, we've done it with concussions, I think. And, but how do we, mm. yeah. Uh, Cause you guys are human beings and, and you get caught up in this, it's for the team. It's for my boys. It's for the fans. It's for, and, and that's such an, uh, it's an honorable impulse as a human to want to kind of suck it up in some sense, fight through it. Um, but at the same time, that really does have long, like a lot of long-term detrimental health effects. Well, so yeah. How do you balance I, that? I, well, I wouldn't go on the ice if I knew that if, if I got hit, in yeah. and again, I it would be even worse. Like like my injuries, like like I, I had a separated shoulder, um, but I ended up letting it heal just for a little bit, and then by the time it was still friggin' sore, but it he, the doctor reassured me that it wasn't it wasn't um, you know I'm not going to hurt it anymore. So right. I, I was, I was fine. Like you, you just battle through it. It's not like, obviously if I had a broken leg, I wouldn't be going playing through that. I know right. like one Stanley cup, I can't remember who it was. He ended up playing with a broken leg too. But, um, but yeah, like as far as like, as long as they're like, I made like me getting hit in the face, like it's yeah, not yeah, really yeah. affecting anything else. It's just pain. Totally. Yeah. You just yeah. kind of just go through it. But yeah, but um, yeah, I, how about this? I, I always was really, um, I made sure that I wasn't taking those uh, pain killers. I, I, yeah. I've seen guys on that, like Ambien was a big thing. Yeah, um, that was a big part of the- Yeah, I, I ended show. up taking a couple Ambien's. I didn't feel right the next day, so I, I stopped it. I was always pretty, I wasn't, I wasn't one of the followers. I was never one of the followers. So when they were all doing that, I, I kind of just kept to myself. You know, right. it's choices in life, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. You, you and you mentioned you do things differently, or you you have that impulse to be like, no, no, don't tell me what to do. I'm going to do this, or or let me figure it out myself, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Like 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 even back in school, like like I never ended up, you know, smoking because I'm like that's disgusting. I never <laughs> ended up. I never ended up um, even doing drugs. Uh, a bunch of the guys were, you know, on my team when I was younger, uh, you know, going to a party, drinking and, and, and everything like that. I would, you know, I might have a beer or whatever, but I would be, you know, getting drunk and, and, and not if, if I had a game the next day. I was one of the guys that I was always in uh, the, night, the night before a game. So it's your choices in life, right? It's you, you got to live with them. So one of the things like, you just got to look at risk reward, right? Like, what are you really getting out of it? Is it, is it, is it, yeah. is, it uh, is it for your path? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, from what I didn't know about you before, in some of the things you've said, you really have kind of a gift in some sense of this awareness of, what is going to get me to where I want to go and what is going to make is going to harm that. And for a lot of people, it's not that clear. Right. And the, you know, the risk reward. So for example, um, somebody who might be an athlete who is like struggling with alcohol or something like that. It's mm -hmm. like, they know, the drinking is not helping their game, but they mm -hmm. can't, you know, there's all kinds of other things underneath that, that are causing them to need to drink and the fears of all kinds of stuff. But that, so, so I, I don't even really know what my question is exactly, but that's um, just sort of helping people understand that if they are like in a place where they're not able to make a decision that they want to make, um, that that's okay too, but they can, I would, and I would say, I would take from your message that if you are in a place like that, where you are struggling to do what's good for you, 
you can change. And if and by by asking for help and by working on it and, and mm-hmm. doing all those kind of things, you will be able to get out of that. Yeah, it's it's one of the best things I'm gonna tell you that really helped me out was my first year. There was this guy that would just when I was with Orlando Solar Bears, a minor which doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the minor <laughs> league team of Atlanta Thrashers, which just doesn't exist anymore. Um, so one of the, I remember he would just hang out in the dressing room and, and our, one of the coaches ended up coming uh, and saying, well, this is, I can't remember his name. Um, but, he, you know, he's here. Just anybody has any questions or you want to just chat? Nobody did. I did. So I just, I would just, get to the rink a little bit early and him and I would just go into a room and we just talk about anything. And it's nice to have somebody that you're able to just talk with and just talk with and no um, judgment. Um, he's not going and tattletailing you to the, the coach. Um, and it, it was just something that was amazing. And, and, you could slowly see that happening with other teams also in Florida Panthers. They had one guy there too. Uh, So it was, it was kind of cool. And even now I talk to the therapist and everybody thinks that that's, that's weird that I I'm like, no, I'm like, it's the best. You don't have, it's your girlfriend, your wife, your mom, your dad, your sisters. (laughs) There are things that, to be honest, they don't have time. They have their own life to deal with, right? And, and, and having somebody that even has a background in, that is able to help you out with that, there's no, there's no shame in, in talking to somebody. It's awesome. Even if, even if you don't even accomplish anything, even if that yeah. person just sits there and listens the whole entire time, it doesn't say anything, just to be able to just say it out loud. And, and that's what that journal is for too. Being yeah. able to just write stuff down and be able to get it off your chest because on your chest, it makes it very, very tough on your body. Off your chest, it really goes and and, and really keeps it light. It's amazing. Yeah, thank you for, for sharing that because it's, it's so weird. I, in my recovery journey, so to speak, I had an army, I had a therapist, a marriage therapist, a psychiatrist, mm-hmm. a meditation teacher um and now i still have a therapist and i am a therapist and and it's like yeah how do we get that message across i love what you said too about you don't even have to accomplish anything just having somebody to sit and listen and to be able to get things off your chest is so powerful and we i'm curious do you see that creeping into minor sport like to the younger kids um in terms of having some sort of I don't know what you would call a guide or psychologist. Um, that, that's what out. I'm, that's what I'm kind of doing. I'm kind of doing a mentorship program. I I'm s- slowly building it up. Uh, I have a few individual players right now because sometimes they don't, they don't want to, they feel weird about uh, talking to their parents because their parents, you know, maybe a little tough on yeah. them or, or what. Um, and I, I kind of combine that with video review and on ice training. So I, you know, I have like a package of five that two of them are going to be on the ice and then three of them are going to be online. And it's something that it's kind of amazing that I'm able to even get some of the, the kids. I'm like, even preparation, like, it's funny, these kids show up to the rink and they put their equipment on, they get on the ice. I'm like, I'm like me, never like me i would always be the preparation guy i would always be preparing i would always being like the night before yeah i would always be in the night before i would be to sleep at a reasonable time some of the like some of the kids nowadays are out to like 11 o'clock and they're like 11 years old i'm like it's crazy i'm like sleep is so important to everybody and i've been you know I got to drink a lot more water, but water, it's funny. The days that I drink water, you just feel things so much clearer than, than not. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's something that, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, 
I would always prepare. Like I, like even when I was, I, I, I was, so that guy that was around the team is just like, well, you gotta, you gotta go and think of your mind as a tape recorder, because it was funny at one point in the, in the games, like I would glance up at the score at one point and not even two minutes later, we could score on scored on. And I'm like, Oh my God. I'm like, I can't look up at the clocks the whole time. I'm yeah. like this. <laughs> I'm like asking guys, how much time is left on the clock? And everybody's just like, uh, it's three. Are you all right, man? <laughs> but it, but it, but it's something that it got in my head. So like, so when I started visualizing, so like I would go into, into the stall, right. In the washroom. Yep. And I would sit there and I would have my hands down like this sitting there. And I would be thinking and going through every part of, of the game, my face-offs, right? What would happen? I would, the puck would come back, DDD, go up, right? And then I would stop it, go back to it. All right, puck comes to me. I go DDD that way. And we'd, I do every single situation on the ice because in the NHL, they would change from um, team to team. They would do different ones. So if I was yeah, able yeah. to visually prepare my mind before I got on the ice, it would make things so much easier. So, and it did. And it, but at one point, at one point, all of a sudden they started going like passing it to me and a guy picked, picked off the puck and I'm like, Oh damn it. Like in my mind. Yeah. yeah. So I, so I ended up <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. pausing it and rewinding it and doing that again. And without the guy picking it off, but your mind is so powerful. Like it's crazy. It is. So you just got to, like little things, preparation, these kids showing up to the rink, prepare, prepare, just like your job, prepare. Don't just show up the, uh, to, to your job. You know what? If you have to do a little bit of research bef at night on your own time, well, that's only going to benefit you. Don't be like, oh, this is not work. It's not that. No, if that is going to benefit you and the next day for that preparation, then do it. I don't know. I don't know why everybody, you know, obviously you don't want to bring your work home but how yeah. about this somebody else is trying to take your job <laughs> <laughs> how so i uh, just if i can pick a little bit more on the the tape recorder thing because that's a great analogy or metaphor D um did you experience much or, or just maybe in your experience working with other players and stuff as a coach or as like a, in your hockey school etc the tape recorder that's more self-critical. So not so much about the game, mm -hmm. but people who get really stuck in their own self-criticism or worrying or being negative about the future or all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Was that, would do you have much, did the guy, I guess, who gave you the tape recorder analogy, that coach person, did, did he talk about that side of it too? And maybe just some of your experience with, internal the internal tape recorder stuff um so like so with, with the tape recorder i i i used it for to for almost to um prepare my mind like we we, we a lot of times we go and prepare our bodies with working out with yeah. being physical war, warm ups and everything like that we don't give our mind a chance to prepare um, getting it, make sure that it's fueled with the right foods, making sure it's fueled, fueled with the right water and then giving it kind of like a little lube up, right? Lubing it a little bit by going in and preparing, like you're going into a job interview, right? Just don't sit there in the interview, like, right? Like go and like prepare, like, like go over the, the company, like go over the, 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 the guys, um, guy that, that's interviewing you go over even some of the numbers in the company, like go into depth about that. Like, don't just show up and, 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 and do that. Um, what I found with, with the players that I work with, they wouldn't have a plan when they would go and like, even one of the guys, he would stand he would stand at the face off. He would stand there and he'd be just like looking around and then the, the puck would drop. And then that guy that his guy that he's supposed to would jump 
And then he'd be like, Oh, I gotta go now. And it's, and it's, it's the whole mindset. It's, it's, it's um, almost like, um, it's almost like an actor. Some of those actors, what do they do? They go and they, 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 they learn the part. Um, how about um, Keith, uh, no, Heath uh, Ledger, right? Uh, with ba- um, Joker. Joker, yeah. He got so far into his, his character that he couldn't get out of it. And he ended up passing away, right? Yeah. And, and, and it's something like, it's, it's almost like they do research on, 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 um, uh, different feelings, different, you know, obviously he was probably obviously getting into the whole dark side of everything, but, but as, as, as a, as a player, like, like going in, like getting a mindset, you put, you show up to the rink, you put your actor uniform on your hockey uniform, right? And you get into the part. It's a whole mindset. It's all leading up to it. I used to go in, in front of a mirror. I would spray water on my face and I would slap myself. Like, like really like slap myself on the face. I had one of my players do it. He's just like, I'm like, no, do it. Like get into the whole thing. <laughs> like even stepping on the ice. Some of the guys we step on the ice and go around. I raced around hard twice as fast as I could. Every single shot I would do, wouldn't do a warm up shot. Like obviously, I wouldn't be hitting the goalie in the face mask, but I would be going. And every single shot would be a, like, you're preparing. You're not going. So it's it's like whatever part of of your life, prepare it. Get in the mindset. Go and figure. Get into if you're doing for a job interview. Get into that whole power. Right. Like like you want to go and get this. How much do you want it? Don't ever feel nervous because there's no, how how about this? Guess what? I felt nervous every single game, but it's a different (laughs) nervous. It's a different, it's it's fine to feel nervous, but it was a different nervous. Don't be in fear. Right, 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 right. Right? Don't be in fear. Yeah. Yeah. Because remember though, I think the people that are in fear are the people that are not prepared. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point. Like, uh, well, one, the one simple definition of anxiety is worrying about the future, underestimating your ability to handle it and underestimating the outcome of the situation happening. So like, mm-hmm. so, but how, like how, so this, the, in the preparation and in that, did you ever experience, you know, some, some like Tiger Woods, you know, the, as an example, his whole world came crashing down and then it just, he was mind fucked basically. Right. Like he, I know. whatever. Yeah. So, so that internal process of kind of learning the skills in that sense of not getting too down on yourself or, or that, or were you just really always kind of like, I'm not, that is such a, not a waste of my time, but I'm not going to go there because I know it's not helpful. And you would just be really disciplined about looking forward. And you said you're a solutions guy, which is another huge skill in, in well-being and good mental health. Well, yeah. What, one, of, one of the, okay, for instance, okay, I got, when I got separated, um, my dog passed away a couple months before that. Uh, I moved into a new place. Um, there, was a, there was a lot of like very high stress. It's almost like I got in a car wreck more or less. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was something that it was very difficult. It was a very difficult time, very difficult. And having to stay focused with my kids, it was very difficult. Um, but like I, I went through a whole year of going and, and being, I wouldn't say in a, I would be a funk. I, I was, I was actually, it almost, it, it, it was just, it, it was, it was a lot. It was, it was more that the relief that I finally moved out and kind of moved on with my life. But um, it was just, it was very, it was a very, um, I just kind of stayed focused on my goals um, with my hockey school, with my coaching platform. And when 
and I made sure that I kept my place was spotless, right? It's a good habit to get in there, wake up in the morning. You, uh, I had a workout, right? Workout, st huge stress leader. Go for a jog, right? A lot of people are lazy. They're just like, oh, they, they put on, uh, now, now everybody's working for home, right? Prepare, prepare that you're, you're not working for home. Go, go for a jog, come back, have a great meal, get showered, get dressed, and then, then you go into your, your, your work mode, right? It, it's something that it's, it's, um, yeah, I never, Hey, everybody gets in the funks, right? It's just, how do you get yeah. out of it? Yeah. Right. Everybody does. Yeah. Everybody's like, everybody's not perfect. Right. Like we're, we're all human and, and you, you're going to make mistakes. Understand that. Understand that you're going to make millions of mistakes. It's just how you, it's just how you deal with those mistakes it is, is the, the difference between the people that are successful and the people that are not. Yeah. yeah. Right. It, 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 there, there's sure. a little, there's a little, like, you, you just, you just got to understand that. Um, uh, what was that? Um, the richest. So my, my girlfriend got me to read the richest man in Babylon. Have, have you read know. that? No. It sounds oh my cool. God. Awesome. So yeah. Babylon was this, was this place that was built in the yeah. middle of the desert, had no water and they reverted the water to this place and there was nothing. So they mm -hmm. basically recreated a whole entire city and it was the, it was the richest city ever. And everybody was making money because they were building. So the builders were making money. All these things were, were, were going, right? Everybody was going in, in rich. Everybody's rich. Like three to five years later, there was only a few people that were rich. Everybody else was poor. And it was, it was pretty crazy because then all of a sudden the, there was talking about how the, the rules of money. And how these, it's funny, all these people think they're like, oh my God, like I have no money. I'm like, well, you just spent $5 on a Starbucks. I'm like, are you able to go and it goes through all these rules. It is awesome. Like, honestly, oh, yeah. something like that. And, and you could almost take that kind of like in, in, in life too, in, in different, in, in, um, there's a lot of life lessons in that, in that richest man in Babylon. Like it's, it's, it's really like cool. That sounds good. I need, yeah. I need some, I need some, uh, I, I have a, I have a weird relationship with money. Cause I, I've basically always been self-employed and I was a professional poker player for a long time Okay. and I need, I want to improve my relationship with money. Well, that so is, I'm going to get that book for sure. It is so good. I got the audio book. Because with me, I've learned that yeah. for me reading stuff, I, I, I need the audiobook. I'm on the road a lot. So yeah, I just yeah, throw yeah. it on there. It's great. But it, yeah, it, it basically just tells the, basically the rules. It, it basically lets the rules of, of, of money uh, out there. So you could, it's pretty, it's pretty Amazing. cool. Amazing. Pretty cool. I got to get on that. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And lastly, thank you so much for your time. Not for sure. Um, we could go on and on. Uh, maybe just kind of what are your i mean your coaching platform is definitely as you mentioned you got all kinds of awesome partners and it's growing and um what are just some of the things you're you have planned for the future and what are you uh hoping happens for for yourself in the next little while well one of the best classes i took in uh, high school it was uh um, a planning class. And it basically said, what's your <laughs> five-year uh, goal? And what's your 10-year goal? I yeah. was able to get all of those. And it's funny, my teacher kind of laughed. She's just like, you have the NHL on there. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, okay. But it's so funny though. But, but those, it's all about going and setting goals for yourself. Like go set goals for yourself. And I have a, like I, like I've, um, it, it's all about balance in life too. Like, uh, Ron Mason, uh, uh, my old coach from Michigan state, he ended up coming into my living room when he wanted to sign me. And he's just like, Mike, you got to think of life as a triangle. 
You got one side, you got um, your, your schooling, right? Um, the one side, you got your sports, right? And I guess you could say working out and staying healthy. And then the other, the bottom, you have, you have your uh, social life. Social life, I guess family could, well, just more, more social life. So based on that, you got to keep every side of the triangle equal. If all of a sudden you're parting too much, well, that side is way too big and it's going to go and affect these two, right? If you're going and study, studying too much, right? That's going to affect these two. So it's all about rebalancing your life and going and really, really focusing on um, what, what do you really want to do? Right? Like, what do you, what do you want to do in your life? And to be honest, you could do anything, right? You could literally do anything. You could, you could go and, and, um, quit your job tomorrow. Well, I wouldn't quit your job tomorrow, but I would go and, and do a test and figure out what you really want to do. And then it, it might surprise you what you might be interested in doing. And then going and doing research on finding a job in that, that area. Maybe you might have to do some education. Then you could go and you, you could transition, right? So something like that, it's pretty powerful. But the thing is, a lot of people are still stuck in their, their, their rut. Um, so for me, what it's pretty amazing. Um, a lot of guys don't plan for after hockey. And a lot of guys... Um, are all of us, they prepare their bodies for, for the season, but they don't prepare their, their minds for after. Yeah, and it's yeah. something, it's something that I was fortunate that I have my hockey school called defense first, uh, defense first.com. Um, it's pretty cool that I'm able to teach youth, youth players. And then I've transitioned into with my coaching platform. I coach them.com. I'm, I was, I'm able to, deal with the the coaches the coaching world so it's kind of funny that i'm able to teach the players and teach the coaches and and give them support um so it's, it's pretty pretty cool right now i got some amazing yeah, things yeah. um and you got to surround yourself with good people so i have the the best developer i have the best um director of um business development. I got some amazing other developers that were just hiring one this morning. Like I was up at, it's not easy. I was up at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. for almost four years, three years, 4 a.m. Yeah. Like I would literally go to bed at maybe 11. I get up at four and I would go like that for hard for about a week and a half. And then I would hit a roadblock. I have to nap for, you know, maybe 12 hours, you know, 15 Is this hours. after you retired? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. 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 I, I couldn't do that while I was, while I was playing. No, no. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah. but, but it's something that it's, you got to put your work in, in order to get it. It's not easier. It's not easy starting your own job and, and, and it's not for everybody. Right. But, um, wouldn't it be awesome to go and live your life, right? Live your life mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. that you want to, because you only have 45 more summers. So. <laughs> if you're lucky. Yeah, totally. I know it's, it's crazy. Yeah. You, I could leave here and, you know, this would be my last podcast. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, kind for sir. sure. That's really nice of your for you to, to to share your time with me and and the people that will be listening. And um, any any parting last words? You you got coachthem.com defensive. What was the defense first? Again? Defense first. Defense first. Thank you. Dot com. Yeah. All that stuff will be in the show notes yeah. or the show description for everybody. Um, you, you, you could probably do about five different podcasts in what we just talked about. <laughs> I know, no doubt. It's so nice to be able just to talk to people. That's, I think, one of the main intentions of this type of conversation is just people are not, we're so fucking brainwashed by this nonsense. And like, oh, I know. people just aren't getting sort of 
a reminder that just having conversations with people is really important. No, for sure. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And that's what one thing that obviously this whole thing has really uh, done. It's, it's stopped the, um, us getting together in person. And I think um, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I think I get mixed feelings as what's going on, but that's a conversation <laughs> for another podcast. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, th well. I think, I think there's a lot of stuff that um, uh, a lot of people are missing based on being kind of locked up and, and um, not being able to socialize and, and, but yeah. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, that next time I, I will bug you sometime down the road, maybe for round two. All right, perfect. Well, awesome. All right, Mike. Thank you, sir. No problem. See okay, you. Okay, buddy. Bye. Bye.